Good evening, everyone. Welcome inside the 7 Sports Cave, a beautiful Sunday night in Detroit. I'm your host, Justin Rose, joined today by two very special people to me. Yes, Rico, you are a special person to me. Rico Beard from the Spartan Beat in Lansing. And we've got to give a special shout out to this guy here, Fred McLeod. No one remembers. Everybody Please. remembers you, Fred. <laughs> now he is the voice of the Cleveland Cavaliers, but he used to work in the Detroit media for how many years? Uh, 24. And the coolest thing to me anyways, is he gave me my start in TV back when I was in high school for the now debunked High School Hammer Time show back in the fun. day. It, it was, was fun. fun. Was I any good back then or did you, you were just feeding were, like my ego? You were just above Dan Gilbert. Dan was, <laughs> Dan was my intern at, at, at Channel 2 back in the day and he said I demoted him, which is probably the dumbest decision I ever made. And then, uh, but you're right above where Dan was. Oh, wow. Dan's done pretty, pretty well for himself, though. Well, now that I have an in, you can you <laughs> yeah. put us in a room together and side by side, you know? You do realize he's nice because he's on your show right now. That's also right. true. Right. He, I'll be monitoring camera, the social so media really, accounts yeah, as yeah. we move forward. Right. He's but I, I do have to you know, publicly thank you for your sport. I would not be for where pleasure. I am without people like you helping me along. Well, the way, it's such so. a great sports town. We know in mm -hmm. Cleveland's the same way. And, you know, the, these Midwest towns are so dyed in the wool and you know, Chicago too. And it's just, uh, it's fun to, to talk to the masses because they care so much. And oh, yeah. you know, I felt it here in Detroit and certainly feel it now in Cleveland. He's here because the Pistons take on the Cavaliers tomorrow down at Little Caesars Arena. We'll talk about the Pistons and the NBA as a whole. This guy travels around, obviously has his nose to the ground in every city. So we'll talk about the NBA coming up, but we got to start with the Lions today. I, I mean, look, I, I don't know, even know what to say about the game today. Did, did the Lions win it or did Carolina lose it more going for two to, with a minute and some to go? I, I look at this as like you the know Lions what? lucked into a win in, in my, my it, opinion. It depends on which crowd you want to talk to. If you want to talk to the Lions fans, they won the game. Yep. They played great. They yep. made the stop. They stopped the two-point conversion. They did. And it's they true. won the game. If you want to talk to the naysayers, they'll say, well, you know, once again, the goalpost is the MVP for the Lions because that's what now the fourth – fifth field goal in the last two weeks yeah. that they missed because they hit the goalpost and then they didn't have any faith in their kicker. No, they didn't. If, and you know what, if I'm Carolina and the way he was kicking that ball, I probably would have thought too, if we can't move it six feet, now I would put Christian McCaffrey, he would have somehow touched the ball, but they won. They're inconsistent. And you know what, maybe practicing in the snow is, <laughs> the, is the There's success. the answer, right? Yeah. That is the answer. Look, the Lions did do good things. They, they shut the running game down for yep. the most part, holding that vaunted rushing attack to less than 100 yards. I think it was 74 on the ground. Now, Carolina outgained him through the air, and they gashed him. But I liked how the Lions responded today. Carolina goes down 90-yard drive to start the game. Matthew Stafford, and they come right back. I mean, Fred, from, from your perspective of just watching sports teams as a whole, I mean, you can only be told you stink for so long until you do something about it, right? Listen, I lived through 24 years of, you know, it's funny in Cleveland, they, they talk about all the quarterback changes since 1999. Did you get little, one of those jerseys with all the names on it? No, I did not, <laughs> but you know, I lived through, you know, Greg Landry and then all through the years until, until Matthew came to town. And so th there's an even bigger gaping hole with, I, I love Gary Danielson and Eric Kippel and, and the rest of them that come through. So listen, they beat a good team today. They, they beat the, the Patriots. So th those are two good wins. You, you know, you, you can't, you can't have it both ways. You can't complain when they when they stink and yet, you know, turn your nose up at a, right, at a one right. point win. And let's face it, Carolina knows they're probably cemented in that playoff spot, and they're not gonna they're not gonna catch New Orleans. So right. So why not uh, go for the win? They failed, and it was a good win. I think the key is having me on this show. I was here when they beat the Patriots. There you go. Wow. So I might be honest, something. That's the key. They should hire me. And you did just come back from Vegas, too. So. No, I'm going to Vegas. Uh, okay. He's going to Vegas, yeah. MSU Hoops is doing their thing. Another victory today. Michigan Hoops is outstanding as well. It's probably for another episode. But, look, what does a win like this do to the public perception of the Lions now? Because <laughs> it, 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 it does what it always does. It's it's what it always does, and I mean it's kind of what Fred said. You got to take the good with the bad, but that's the Lions' motto: take the good with the bad. You know, forward down the field, take the good with the bad. Because <laughs> is that how the lyrics go? That's the new lyrics. <laughs> that's the new lyrics. Drew Sharp had backwards down the field. Mine is forward down the field, take the good with the bad. Because this team frustrates you. Because you can see when they go out there and they beat the top teams, and then they drop a game that they shouldn't, and unfortunately. That's the Lions' way, SOL, same old Lions. 
But the Bears game will be huge. That, I, that's where I'm going with it, too. Because, look, you have the Bears at home, Thanksgiving Day, national audience. Maybe change some of the national perspective yep. about your team by beating a team uh, that, that's a good football team when they're leading the division. Then you have the Rams that come to town. I mean, that's the juggernaut that everybody's looking at. And probably not going to win that game. But before the season started, you probably weren't going to beat New England. You probably weren't going to beat But would you Carolina. be shocked if they beat the Rams? No, no. I would And that's, that's the Lions. No. It's the games you think they have no shot, put your money on the Lions. And I don't want to bring up the P word about playoffs because, look, <laughs> it, it's, it's a, it's a shit. But you look at the NFC, the wild card picture, teams that are in that spot are now getting losing records. And the Lions are right there at four and six. They win the next two weeks. I'm just saying. I, look, I'm not saying. I'm just saying. I, I don't really have a lot but of just hope because you're peddling it, peddling it tonight. <sighs> How much is it? It's, uh, you're it's peddling free. hope it's tonight, it's my free. friend. It's, it's cheap. I, I think they should practice Thanksgiving morning. There you go. Outside. There it is. Before kickoff. Maybe a little breakfast and a 7 a.m. workout. Do you think that Matt Patricia, like, sits in his, like, you know, his chair at home, his big, you know, easy chair with a maybe, a, like, a pipe and says, ha, 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 those idiots that laughed at me for practicing in the snow, and here we are. I'm quite sure he does. I he got he a does. little bit of satisfaction because I think he knew that they lost. That was going to be in the first five questions asked for him. <laughs> yeah. Somebody was going to bring up the snow. And he was like, I shut them up for a week. Michigan, Ohio State, it is officially game week for the game, if you will. The only time you capitalize the in front of game. But uh, look, Michigan and Indiana, what a football game that ended up being. I, I, I had not seen an Indiana team play that hard, maybe ever. Would you guys watch that game? No, granted, I never thought Michigan was going to lose the game, but... Did you guys think that maybe Indiana had something to prove, or did Michigan look ahead a little bit? I mean, Why was that, that game so close? Because it's their bowl game. You know, let's let's face it, they're they're they may get six wins and maybe go to the Cornflower Bowl and <laughs> wherever. So it's just, but you know, they gave Ohio State, for example, a bit of yep. a run early and then uh, and then caved in. But uh, you knew U of M would uh, would take care of it. But uh, you know, I think it's going to be a great battle. I, I think what Michigan's favored by a field goal now, three and a half. I think that's what we yeah. found out. Yeah. Um, Two years ago, all the Cavs, we all went to uh, the horseshoe to watch that game. I remember that. And that was a game where Michigan outplayed them, really, for three and a half quarters, and then Buckeyes escaped with a win. But I think um, the Ohio State defense is extremely vulnerable. And uh, so, it's, you know, it's, it's the weakness of the U of M offense against the weakness of the Ohio right. State defense. Strength of the strength Michigan defense. Strength. strength of the Ohio State defense. It'll be, it'll be fun. Yeah. And, and before all the Michigan fans get upset with me, I did expect that. But it's not because, oh, he's been a hater. Indiana is to Michigan, what Northwestern is to State, what Purdue is to Ohio State. It's that team, it's the fly in the ointment. It's the team that makes no sense on paper, but gives that team a battle every year. Indiana has taken Michigan to overtime, I think, like three or two of the last four years. Mm -hmm. Like the games have been close. So I didn't expect it to be a blowout. Now, Michigan's won like the last 28 times. Right. So I, I knew they would always win. Always close, but Michigan, But you always yeah. take Indiana in the points because for some reason, Indiana just has it. Now, I do think that both teams got caught looking further ahead. Uh, Ohio State barely survives. And I think, you know, while the Michigan team may have been having an eye on the Ohio State game saying, hey, we may already be going to Indy without playing, they lost a little focus on Indiana because, in, you know, Indiana's like, hey, we're still here. Right. The game got very chippy. Yeah, and, I mean, um, Chase Winovich, his status is up in the air. And, and another uh, Braylon Edwards brother, you know, uh, basically Burke, yeah. giving a massive concussion on the field. So it did get a little chippy, but it's nowhere. I mean, maybe it's a warm up for what they're going to experience on Saturday down in Columbus. Look, it has to be said. I said it three weeks ago when Michigan State played Ohio State. You want Michigan State to, to put you in the game. It didn't happen. Maryland, potentially beating Ohio State, puts Michigan in the game. And, and all the fans are, no, no, no. We want to earn it. We want to beat it. What happens if you don't? No Big Ten championship game. No college football playoff. A nice New Year's Day bowl game. Fin. You know? that's, where, that's where you have to wonder if it's mental. And, okay. and, and that's the dragon they have to slay. 100%. Uh, and how many years has it been since they've beaten Ohio State? I mean, uh, it is. It has been 10, 12 years, I believe. The fickle year, yeah. So it, it, it's been so long, and, and I just wonder if that pressure, as, as good as this Michigan team's been, and these kids have really been attentive to each week and, like, taking it from Jim Harbaugh where they don't look ahead and stuff, I, ju I just worry for the Michigan fan base. One of my it's buddies the said ultimate that, dragon for them. On the road, Ohio State. 
They're not the same team at home. Michigan is world beaters. If oh, this yeah. game was in Ann Arbor, right. they would win this thing I going away. On the road, if you look at it, they were, you know, they lost to Notre Dame. They were down 17 uh, Northwestern before they came back. 7-7, getting ready to go into the fourth at MSU. And now you got to go to Ohio State. This slays all your demons. You're done because you went on the road and you won a big game against a top 10 team. That's been the big knock. And you get to go to Indianapolis. So all the Indianapolis jokes go away mm -hmm. because you finally gone. And if you screw this up, because expectations are so high, devastating. Oh. And, and Jim Harbaugh knows, you know, over the last three years, Ohio State's had 13 top three draft picks in the NFL. So their defense is just not nearly what it used to be in the past. So game film will, will say that you know, Ohio State's coughed up a slew. I think it's like uh, six or seven 70 yard plus runs from oh, yeah. scrimmage. So it's, it's, a, it's been a sieve. Yeah, I think they had at least to add to like 20, 40 plus plays their defense has given up this season. What's the attitude in Ohio, Fred? In, in Cleveland, I know it's not Columbus. A little, little apprehension, but, but they also know they still can control their own destiny. If they take care of business at home and then win the Big Ten championship and get some help, they can still slide into the playoff spot. So it's crazy. Offensively, they're fine. I mean, yeah. I love their quarterback and they've got skill guys all over the place, but defensively, they just, I mean, Maryland? Are you yeah. serious? Yeah, and, and Michigan State even, with that, that putrid offense, was able to move the ball right. at times when they weren't pinned back. See, I, this, this, I, I'm on the other side of the ball, though. I want to see what Haskins can do, because this is the first time that Michigan defense has faced a real quarterback all year. Say what you want, yeah, but in Book wasn't playing for Notre Dame in that game. Right. So this is the first time that they actually got a quarterback who isn't injured, playing in the game. So I, I'm anxious to see because I think Indiana may have handed the blueprint and said we couldn't do it, but you got a lot we more talent we didn't have out the there. Horses. You right. guys we, do. we don't have the five stars that you have Ohio State. It's going to be a fun game. I think yeah. kind of like in two, it's, it reminds me of the, two, uh, the game two years ago and the game in right. 2006 where one versus two, you really didn't know who was going to win. You just you sat there and like a guy like me, I'm just going to sit there and watch it because I don't have a dog in the fight. It, it's still the best rivalry in, in, in it college is. football. It is. Right? It is you from can the say what you want about yeah. Auburn and Alabama and Oklahoma, Oklahoma State and USC, UCLA. It's still the best. Well, not Indiana, right. Purdue, the old Oakland <laughs> Bucket. Yeah, I was going to say. It, That's it, for the Sunflower Bowl, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah right? Right, right. All right. Well, right. look, who you got? Who you taking? I got an Ohio driver's license, so uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to. In, in the world of social media, I'll take the uh, scarlet and gray, but... Uh, <laughs> But I'm sitting in a okay. All in right. a, an amazing blue studio, so I, I think it'll be a great game. Okay. Uh, I think that it's on the road, so I'm going to finish the second half of his statement and say uh, I.O. Wow. So. Really? Yeah. I, I, I Look, I think this is Michigan's year. There's something special Could be. about the character of these kids on this uh. team. I know you hate hearing that, but, hey, it's the truth. Look, this the, the revenge tour has one more stop, and it's in Columbus, and I think they get it done next. I subscribe yeah. to the theory that the longer a streak continues, the closer it comes to ending. So there you go. Is that how you play roulette too? In profile. I would not be that's, surprised. That's how I play roulette. All right. black, I go red at some point. Yeah, yeah, you got to okay. win eventually, right? Eventually, right? <laughs> All right, coming up next, we want to hear from you. Use the hashtag 7 Cape. We'll get to your tweets later on in the broadcast, but we're going to talk about the NBA. we got the Pistons and the Cavs tomorrow. we got the guy who calls all the Pistons, or excuse me, the Cavs games. Best friends of LeBron James, basically. We'll be right back after this. Stay with us.